Sphere's flexible routing provides many ways to integrate into your system. So let's walk through a basic setup to help you get started. For more detailed configurations, refer to our videos tailored to specific DAWs and applications. Once you've installed Sphere and restarted your computer, you'll notice new core audio devices in your system, including Sphere Monitor 16, Monitor 32, and Monitor 64. These can route audio between your DAW, Dolby Renderer, System Audio, and more. You can create additional audio bridge devices in Sphere using the Ground Control Audio Bridge tool. These buses will automatically appear in your Max Core Audio device list. Ground Control's Link plugin can also be used to route low latency stereo or immersive audio from any DAW to Sphere. Let's take a look at some basic settings in Sphere. In the File menu, you'll find commands to create, open, and save Sphere configurations. These configurations store your entire Sphere setup, including routing, labels, plugins, base management, and latency and clocking preferences. While one configuration may meet all your needs, you may wish to create different configurations for tracking versus mixing sessions. The Settings menu allows you to resize the app, adjust latency or buffer size, and assign remote control devices such as Stream Decks, MIDI controllers, Yukon controllers, or Sphere's own app. We can also create and name additional ground control audio bridge devices here. Sphere's master clock and sample rate are configured in this menu, alongside licensing and general preferences. Let's go through some of the more important parameters in the settings menu. Latency allows you to adjust the buffer size. As with any DAW, lower latency reduces delay, but increases CPU usage. Typically, low latency is ideal for tracking sessions, while higher latency may be needed as more plugins are added. The master clock and sample rate settings allow you to select your preferred master clock device and sample rate. Sphere will automatically set its sample rate to match the selected clock. To start, set the clock to your main audio interface or the Sphere 16 bus. All input sources will be re-clocked to this sample rate using our high quality sample rate conversion. Let's set up our input routing. Start by mapping your speaker layout in the Max Audio MIDI setup utility. Here, I'm configuring the Sphere 16 bus as a 7.1.4 output mapped to channels 1 through 12. If you use another layout, such as 916 or 71, map your speakers to the widest layout you plan to use. Core Audio will use this layout to route audio to Sphere's input section. Next, we'll assign Sphere's input source A to the Sphere 16 monitor bus. We have a 714 layout, but choose whichever layout you're using. Rename the input by double-clicking its label and optionally assign a color. Note that the color will remain gray until an active bus has been chosen. The large button will illuminate when the input is active. Click the lock icon to allow multiple input sources to be active simultaneously. To insert a plugin, such as a meter, click the effects icon and select the desired plugin. Right click to bypass or remove a plugin. The gear icon opens a window displaying channel input assignments, volume trims, and solos and mutes for each path. You can trim the volume of the input source at the top of this window or next to the input meters on the main window. The knob in the input section routes this input to the Q output. Remember, the Q output can play either the Q mix or the main output signal, depending on its source selection. Now let's set up our output routing. On the right hand side, you'll find 12 output channels. Each output can be routed to a core audio bus or a hardware device connected via USB, Thunderbolt, HDX, or Ethernet. You can even link up to eight devices in a single output to create a custom multi-channel interface. Let's select the interface connected to our speakers. In this case, an Audient Aurea with a 714 layout. Click the gear icon to adjust settings for each output path, including volume trim, polarity, delay, and bass management. By default, the LFE routes to sub A, but this can be customized for up to four subwoofers. Each speaker channel can have its own plugin for EQ or other processing, or a multi-channel plugin can be inserted on the entire output path. In this case, Sound ID is being used to calibrate the Atmos system. Outputs can be renamed and color-coded as desired. 
As with the input section, outputs can be latched using the lock icon next to the on button. Now is a good time to save and name your configuration. Let's test our audio. Begin with a low monitor volume until you are confident of a proper output. Let's return to the audio MIDI utility and the speaker configuration for the Sphere 16 bus. In the audio MIDI utility, click the speaker icon next to the left speaker label. This will play a five second burst of pink noise. You should see a signal in the left input meter in Sphere. You should also see a signal in the main meter section for the left channel. And if Sphere's main volume control is up, you should also hear pink noise from your left speaker. Continue this test with all the speaker outputs. If you're not hearing a specific channel, first check the audio MIDI channel mapping, and then Sphere's input metering, output metering, and routing. Of course, check your speaker cabling, power connections, and if available, check the meters on your audio interface to verify how far the signal is getting. A nice way to check our work is with the Apple Music app. First, make sure your max audio output is set to Sphere 16 bus. Then go to the Preferences in the Apple Music app and ensure Dolby Atmos playback is set to Automatic. Search for the Dolby Atmos Channel ID 714 test track and play it. You should hear a voice identify each speaker Left. in sequence. Right. Center. Left surround. Right surround. By now, you should have the hang of routing audio with Sphere. Check out our playlist below for some enjoyable Atmos listening and follow the links to our other instructional videos. For more information, web over to gingeraudio.com.